Yes, uh, let us begin the class. We shall not wait for the students. Uh, still, uh, some more students have to join. As the strength is uh, 57, no problem. It's a very quite good strength. And uh, let me start the class. So in the previous class, I have started the second unit, that is the assemblers. Uh, assemblers is also a low level uh, system programming and uh, it is it itself is having the assembly language and uh, assembly language as you all know it itself is a low level language and assemblers are very important uh, in converting the machine code as the machine understands zeros and ones so it is very important uh, for any language processing to have the zeros and ones uh, process information so that the machine can understand in zeros and ones. So the language can be of any high level language or the low level language. So uh, once again, let me uh, uh, brief you about the what was covered in the previous class. Uh, it was told at all about the assembler's advantage and what is assembler. Assembler is nothing but a low level system programming and it converts to object code or zeros and ones machine coded. As I have told you, these are the contents uh, which uh, it is very important uh, for us to know about the elements of the assembly language programming. In the elements of the assembly language programming, we have seen how it converts to the machine coded. Uh, actually, a host machine as I'm using the computer, this computer host machine is of the 32-bit machine. So it depends on the host machine, either it is a 32-bit machine or 16-bit machine or 8-bit machine and furthermore, it can be of 64-bit machine also. So it depends on that, uh, the machine instructions. So every instruction have the, let me recall you, every instruction like add, sub, multiplication, division, Whatever may be the instructions, every instruction have got their own opcode. Those opcodes are called as the instructions which are used for framing of the language. So it all depends on the instructions of the assembly language so that it can convert further how it is converting based on the type of the machine, either it is a 8-bit or 16-bit machine. So I have shown you in the previous class one slide, how does it converts to an zeros and ones or the machine coded. As this was the format, so it converts to zeros and ones format or the machine coded. And this machine coded format here, if you see here, it takes off three digits and uh, the operand it takes of one digit and of code it takes of a two digit and whether it is a signed or not signed for example this is one the example whether it is a plus and nine is allocated to something like load and store nine is a value of the op code what is being used in the in the op code like in this complete uh, instruction format it is nothing but an instruction format for any uh, code to be written in an assembly language so if this instruction format well here i have not mentioned what type of the instruction format it is it is either 8 bit instruction format or to uh, sorry um, 16 bit or it is a 32 bit instruction format so based on the instruction format a machine generates Based on the instruction format, a machine generates the, sorry, uh, a assembler generates the machine code. That machine code is nothing but a object code. And if you see in the previous class, 
well this was the story of the instruction format so everything depends on the instruction format so how this instruction format converts this instruction format converts because of the scanner that is uh, the syntax analysis and the i mean lexical analysis and uh, syntax analysis the lexical analysis is called as uh, the scanning and the syntax analysis is called as parsing here also the lexical analysis and syntax analysis goes on so before that let me recall you the story of how a machine how a machine uh, does the conversions if you have the source code now this is your source code assume that before that this is a very brief um, story about the assembler if you have the assembler that assembler uh, anyhow any the assembler accepts the source code that source code um, uh, processes through the pre processing then uh, the compilation if any errors are there the compilation takes place and after that it uh, converts to the assembly code and uh, the assembler it uh, converts it into object code or the machine code here this part is very important this machine code itself a conversion is a very um, again a big conceptual uh, story and here it uh, here either that machine code conversion takes of which format either 16 bit format 8 bit format 32 bit format 64 bit format so whatever may be the format so all the uh, formats depends on the opcode what is the value of the opcode the value of the opcode it depends on the type of the assemblers like suppose if it is 8086 assembler and uh, like suppose if it is 8085 assembler the opcode values may change so who are those opcode values for example for example like add sub add it may take uh, moving from the move instruction move instruction may take around 01 the value of the op code move then add it may take 02 add and sub it may take 03 sub mul 04 division 05 so all of this so on and load and store for every instruction there is a value there for every instruction there is a value so it all depends on the value of the instruction it all depends on the value of the instruction so that value of the instruction is dependent on again the is uh, that is also again dependent on the type of the assembler what we are using and also it is dependent on the the type of the machine which we are choosing the machine can be as i said multiple times i have told you the machine can be of 8 bit machine can be of 16 bit machine can be of 32 bit machine can be of 64 bit machine can be of uh, further more uh, for uh, for scientific and all the machines will be of the 64 bits and more than that also super computers are used the host machines can be of a larger bit versions so here we are talking about the assemblers now let me brief why assemblers are important the assemblers are very important because it itself accepts the uh, uh, it is very important that every language should be processed in zeros and ones so assembler is the one which converts into zeros and ones so you may be thinking that then what may be the duty of the compiler they uh, they are are considered to be the as if if you see if you see here the compiler compilations the compiler compilation does lexical analysis and the uh, syntax uh, syntax analysis then after that they, there is a generation of the assembly code that the generation of the assembly code is because of the assembler is because of the assembler and this assembler is very important part for having the conversion of any language to the object code 
and that object code is nothing but the machine code. I hope you all have understood here why the assembler is very important. Why the assembler is very important, though the language can be of the higher level language or the language can be of the low, uh, low level language. It is very important to have, uh, to convert it into the machine code or the object code. So before that, there is a conversion of, before that, there is a conversion of the parse tree that is nothing but the coming, moving from the high level language with the conversion of the lexical analysis and syntactical analysis so that they can, uh, so that they uh, go with the translator of the assemblers and the assembler converts it into the machine code. So after this machine code, generation it is very important to convert it into the executable code using the linker it gets converted to the executable code so i am repeating a number of times the story of the assembler so you should be very careful what are assemblers means assemblers are nothing but the low level language processors and uh, they are very important why they are very important because they are very important as the machine understands the zeros and ones so they convert into the machine code that is zeros and ones and uh, here let me uh, tell you in the very text textual way why it is very important today the assembly language is used primarily for direct hardware manipulations Direct, as I was saying in the previous no, class, no, no, no. direct hardware manipulations no, no. are because of the hardware uh, hardware manipulations no, no. like CD uh, CD uh, drives, or uh, and even it is useful in embedded systems. Like one example, I have taken the real time example that is of the water tank. So they are useful in water tank indicators. So the assemblers are useful in embedded systems. So here. Today, the assembly language is used primarily for the direct hardware manipulations, access to specialized processors instructions, or to address the critical performance issues. The critical performance issues like it can be of the, uh, the uh, manipulation in the hardware drivers and uh, typical uses are the device drivers, as I said, like low level embedded systems and the real time systems like they are useful in manipulations of the bus systems or also and advantage is that it allows the complex jobs to run in a simple way as the memory is very efficient and it requires less memory it is faster in speed as its execution time is less it is mainly hardware oriented as the assemblers are the hardware oriented it requires less instruction to get the results. So this is very important. And then next another one, you need to understand the assembly can be expressive low level things and you can access the machine dependent registers and IVO, you can input, you can access and you can control the exact code behavior in the critical sections. Like you may be knowing in operating systems, what are the critical sections and uh, what is the um, uh, how it enters in how any how any program enters into critical section and when does it leaves the critical sections? Uh, so during that time, the uh, uh, during that time the assemblers plays a very important role uh, to involve in the deadlock situations also between the multiple. Uh, software threads and uh, hardware devices one thing you should understand it is useful in manipulating the drivers and all the embedded systems and it is also useful in uh, device uh, hardware devices manipulations so assemblers are very important and the main important is that assemblers converts into machine code that's very important the main story of that you should understand as the content which I have shown, let me uh, tell you about the brief content, how is the second syllabus of your portion, the second uh, unit of your portion, how it is very important, like uh, the second unit, as it says, at all you have to study about the elements of the assembly language programming and uh, a simple assembly scheme 
as I have told how it does the lexical analysis and uh, syntax analysis and how does it generate the instruction code, sorry, machine code using the instruction format. And path structure of the assemblers, path structure of the assemblers, design of two pass assemblers, a single pass assemblers. So it is very important to know. So this is how your syllabus. The second syllabus, second unit, it's very simple. Second unit is very less and it hardly requires seven hours. So sec second unit, this is how the second unit. So I have briefed you about the second unit. So we will study one application about a single pass assembler for IBM PC. For IBM PC will be studied. I hope you all have seen. Yes, Pooja. Pranish, Ritwich, Mukund, Pranal, Pranish, Rituja, any doubt? Yes, go through the Yes, this is how uh, the content which I have shown you. The content, it is very important that what is an assembly language programming and what are assemblers and uh, applications of assembly language, advantage of assembly language, disadvantage of assembly language. So in the previous class also, I have told you what is the main disadvantage the main disadvantage of the assembly language is it is a machine oriented language it is a machine oriented because it instructions will be produced based on the machine it requires familiarity with the machine architecture and understanding of the availability of the instruction set execution in assembly language program is comparatively time consuming compared to the machine language and the reason is that the assembly language translator program is needed to translate the assembly program into binary code a separate translator is needed so that is the what is that separate translator because in this we are uh, in the compiler again we are having uh, again, uh, with the combination of the compiler, we are having the uh, assembler. So that itself is called as here a separate translator. So the elements, you need to remember again and again, what are the elements? Because as the syllabus says, the very first unit, uh, sorry, second unit of the syllabus says, very beginning, element of the elements of the assembly language program so elements of the assembly language programming are the mnemonic codes are uh, the mnemonic code symbolic of brands and data declarations so mnemonic codes like add serve mal these are the mnemonic codes what are the mnemonic codes mnemonic codes are also called as the op codes mnemonic code are also called as the of code. What are of codes? Yes, what are of codes? Is anybody? Yes, Pranesh. What are of code? Shivani. Shivani, Radhika, what are up codes? What is assembly language? Yes, 
Yes. What is assembly language? Are you seeing the screen? Yes. What is assembly language? Assembly language is a low level language programming which uses the symbolic codes or the mnemonic instructions like add, sub, mul. The examples add, sub, mul, load, store. Are you all are aware of 8086 microprocessor? Yes. With which? Puja. Yes, Hello. Microprocessor, you all are aware, no? Which microprocessor you have studied? Microprocessor itself is an example of assembly language. Yes. Naveen, and most of the students are after joining, they are leaving. The strength was 57, now it is 51. Anisha? I will consider the same strength. Anisha? Yes, ma'am. Uh, what is assembly language? You have microprocessor subject, no? You all studied no, in microprocessor subject in second year. Anisha. Gauri, Ditti. Onkar, Naveen. Yes, madam. Bolli. Haan, always Onkar will be responsive. Onkar, you had the subject like microprocessor, no? Haan, padha hai. It's rate 5 ka hai. Inhaan cha version sirf padha hai. Uske aage class nahi hua hai. Then, ohi to hai am assembler. That itself is a assembler. Okay. जी जी पावरफुल इंस्ट्रक्शन जी पावरफुल इंस्ट्रक्शन सेट होगा जो मल्टीप्लिकेशन डिवीजन ऑपरेशन परफॉर्म करेगा बड़ा हम्म दैट इटसेल्फ इज अ असेंबली लैंग्वेज ओके डू यू नो व्हाट इज ऑप कोड जी क्या पूछा ऑप कोड अब वो इंस्ट्रक्शन सेट होगा जो सीपीयू द्वारा एग्जीक्यूट किया जाएगा जिसके ऑपरेशन परफॉर्म करने के लिए लाइक like, क्या बोल सकता हूं मैं इसको जो डाटा ऑपरेशन होंगे मल्टीप्लिकेशन सबट्रैक्शन वो ऑपरेशन परफॉर्म करने के लिए जो सीपीयू को इंस्ट्रक्शन दिए जाएंगे वो एग्जीक्यूट करेगा ऑफ कोड और जो बोलते हैं हम ऑपरेंट ऑपरेंट क्या करेगा शायद वो जो मेमोरी है वो मेमोरी उस इंस्ट्रक्शन को एग्जीक्यूट करके उसको आगे की क्यू में एग्जीक्यूट करेगा सिर्फ इतना ही पता है हम्म हम्म नो नो व्हाट इज द वैल्यू ऑफ ऐड ऑफ कोड्स आर नथिंग बट द कोड्स ऑफ ए इंस्ट्रक्शंस व्हाटएवर द स्टोरी यू आर टेलिंग इट्स करेक्ट ओनली बट द थिंग आई एम आस्किंग हियर ऑफ कोड्स आर नथिंग बट कोड्स ऑफ द इंस्ट्रक्शंस लाइक ऐड सब मल्टीप्लिकेशन डिवीजन मूव लोड स्टोर एंड मेनी मोर ओके फॉर एवरी इंस्ट्रक्शन देर इज अ कोड इट बिगिन फ्रॉम जीरो जीरो इट बिगिन फ्रॉम जीरो जीरो एंड सो ऑन से फॉर एग्जाम्पल फॉर मूव इट इज जीरो जीरो और फॉर एड इट इज जीरो वन फॉर सब इट इज जीरो टू लोड मे बी जीरो फोर स्टोर मे बी जीरो फाइव लाइक दिस सो ऑन so based on this uh, operation code op code is nothing but operation code 
so this operation code for user understanding it is called as instructions for an user understanding it is called as instruction but further in the machine internally it will consider them as the op code or the operational code based on the operational code the actions are performed on operands the actions are performed on operands and this operand results are stored in the memory as you are telling getting anisha you did not answer anything you had a subject hmm? maybe you kept on and went on is it right am i right sneha shruti all are running away keeping the your mobile or whatever the device hmm sanika sanika is there saurav vaishnavi sonia sneha so this will lead to serious action so you should not be like that you should be not be idle so please you should respond hmm so nali saloni only one card is telling So, Nali, tell me the answer of what is this number? Anisha? Okay, fine. I'll continue the class. People are not answering. Anisha left only. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so again, I begin by saying yes. Assembler, assembly language, and what are the elements? Elements are opcode, operands. Opcodes are mnemonic instructions or mnemonic codes. Operands are the uh, which are performing. Operands are used by the opcodes. to have the results or what actions we want to do and data declarations these are the elements before elements once again i'll recall you assembly language is a low level language which uses the symbolic codes or the mnemonic as instructions like load store add sub these are the load into accumulator store into an accumulator and these are the instructions and many more for processing of an assembly language we need the a transmitter called as assemblers so order assembler assembler is a translator which translates the assembly code into machine code which translates the assembly code into machine code and as i said the applications are useful in cd drivers in manipulating the hard disk drivers and also in some of the low level embedded systems and the disadvantage is that it is a machine oriented language so based on the machine the instructions are uh, instructions are formed and uh, what are the elements of the assembly lang uh, language programming it is mnemonic operation codes and symbolic operands and data declarations mnemonic codes are the codes of the instructions symbolic operands are the operands which are used uh, uh, with the op codes or the operational codes to perform an action what we want let me read here the programmer can associate the symbolic names with the data instructions and use these symbolic symbolic names as the operands in assembly language statements 
and this uh, facility frees the programmer from having to think of the numeric addresses in the program. We use the term symbolic name only in formal context elsewhere we simply say the name symbolic operands and data declarations data declarations declaring the size of the memory declared in a variety of notations including the decimal notations it avoids the need to manually specify the constants in representation that a computer can understand that the computer can understand like so for example five how you give five five is five how you give five you may give in the uh, one i mean one two four eight so one zero zero one so how is the statement format the statement format begins by uh, label of code operands and operands and as well as the comment now here is the example again again is a label mult is a opcode or the instruction and uh, breg and areg are nothing but the or registers and these registers are can also be called as the can also be called as the operands in front which are used with the mult and these multiply the register a with the register b this instruction multiplies the register a with the register b and these are also called as the symbolic names symbolic name is equal to operation code example mult what is the symbolic name the symbolic name is mult and what is the memory word? The memory word is operand specification. The memory word is operand specification. That is the register A and B. So the statement format as it is continued here. So if at all, that was the simple example. And if at all, any displacement value is there. So how the displacement value will be calculated? So the operand ARE refers to the memory word with which the name ARE is associated. And if the operand is having plus 5, it refers to the displacement value of 5 with the, uh, to the offset of ARE. Okay. That is nothing but the register or the symbolic name. The operand, if it is having uh, for such type of uh, uh, operand declarations, we call it as the indexing operand. And this indexing operand with the register 4, that is the operand address, is obtained by adding the content of the content of the index register 4 to the address of A. Then operand, the operand with if it is. Uh, the operand of the symbolic with added by four and uh, something like uh, five uh, uh, added by five and something like multiplied by four is a combination of the previous two specifications where the indexing and the uh, offset value is added and this is how the instruction format the instruction format is of two one and three digits is of two one two one and Three digits. Three digits is of the memory operand. One digit is of the register operand, and two digits is of the opcode. Two digits is of the opcode. The two digits is of the opcode means like 0, 01, 0, 02, 0, 03, 0, 04, and again further they get represented in the binary forms. Further they get represented in the binary binary forms. So three digit is of the memory operand and the machine code will produce by the assembler. Okay, the opcode and the register uh, operand, the register operand and memory operand for two, one, three digits. And the type of the assembly statements as we have the imperative and declarative statements. 
imperative statements are the language that indicate an action to be performed during the execution of the assembly statement so this is all i have covered and the how was the declarative declarative can be using the and uh, i mean uh, declare storage and uh, using the declare constant and uh, declare storage means directly you can use here the constant value and uh, and declare uh, declare constant you can directly use the value declare constant by quoting the single quote and of course they have the label so here and this is the one of the example of the declarative statement a is a statement reserves one word of memory for the variable a this statement says that a is a variable which is having one word of memory and this one one is a statements associated with the memory word one and also containing the value here there is no containing the value a reserves one word of memory here one reserves one word of memory and with the value of one and with the value of one the type of the assembly languages for the uh, for a uh, furthermore uh, assemblers directives are start and end and even the origin and equal to eq equal to how is the format the syntax of the equal to uh, assembler directive to use means involve with the eq and address specification now here loop is the one address specification and back is the Uh, label back is the label, and here we are using the literal origin. If you wanted there any literal origin values to be given, so you can also give those values. Now start at, for example, start at two hundred location and end is also an uh, as a uh, advanced uh, assembler directive. and origin is also an advanced assembler directive uh you can uh, have here in detail by the words this directive instructs the assembler to put the uh, address given by the address location or the address specification in the location counter and eq statements associates the name symbol with the address specified by the address specification and however the address in the location counter is not affected and uh, the ltorg is a label the uh, is the assembler directive advanced assembler directive which stands for the origin for the literals allows a programmer to specify where the literals should be placed if the program does not use the lt i mean uh, the origin with the literals statements the assembler would enter all the literals used in the program in a single pool and allocate memory to them when the when it encounters that's what we need to use the ltorg uh, as and then where it is required to represent the literals so this is the sample program and here the literals are used in the stair line uh, location at 2 and also here one and so was the program a uh, complete specification of the assembly language program as the program uses the as the uh, these are the program line counters and also the next column is of the label and the third column is of the instructions the third column is of the instructions and the fourth column is of the operand instructions and here the memory location is started for this program is at the 200 location and these are the instructions and of course these are the memory locations and uh, these are the uh, displacement value which the line address it is taking that was the program which i have also explained in the previous class and assembly uh, assembly language scheme has got the four approach to develop the design specification and the design specifications uh, like to identify how you can write any assembly language program uh, specification first you need to identify the uh, informations necessary to perform the task and then design a suitable data structure to record 
those informations and uh, determine the processing necessary to obtain and maintain the informations and determine the processing necessary to perform the task and this is how the design of the assemblers as i said add itself is a instruction that uh, this instruction will be having the instruction code as here i have taken the example for add the instruction code is of 01 and for the sub the instruction code is of 02 and the memory length is of 11 for each of those and from the source language from the source program uh, where the analysis phase starts to the synthesis phase for the generation of the object code up to there uh, the two types of the tables are uh, generated whatever the symbols are used in the program they are located at the particular locations in the memory by a particular address locations for example if the program if the program uses something like a label again and again these are the symbolic okay these are the symbolic uh, notations or the symbolic labels and for those the address locations it specifies in the symbol table it specifies in the symbol table and using the mnemonic table and so mnemonic table is of the table of the inst uh, instructions of the instructions of the operand uh, sorry of course and with their uh, suitable memory size with their suitable memory size so this, uh, these are the two tables which are required for synthesis phase uh, that is generation of the object code useful for the generation of the object code what exactly hap happens in the analysis phase the analysis phase is the primary function performed by the analysis phase is the building of the symbol table that is how the analysis phase is the building of the symbol table for this purpose it must understand the address of the symbolic name address of the symbolic name address of the symbolic name it should know the address of the symbolic name what is the uh, address of the n n is the symbolic name and what is its address 113 again is a symbolic name and what is its address 104 so for this purpose it must determine the address of the symbolic name as it is uh, as it is in the process of building the symbolic table so it will detect first what are the symbols used in the program and it will also determine their address of the symbolic name so this function is called as the memory allocation so during this period it is called as a memory allocation and this function means the determining or the determination of the symbolic names with their address symbolic names with their address as they are in the symbol table so during this period it is called as the memory allocation to implement as pranesh was saying so this is how the this is how where you are telling about the uh, i mean the mo the moment the uh, source code it uh, the moment the source code is fed by the uh, translator the assembler what it does the assembler first it goes in search of what is the type of the instruction and uh, it goes with the search of the opcode value and uh, the opcode value it goes with the uh, i mean evaluation of that opcode up value with the uh, address uh, the operands that is the symbols what what that is the symbol uh, symbolic names what are used in the symbol table and then it further goes for the action to be performed on that what whether addition with the subtraction so what type of uh, actions are performed on the complete set of the instruction or the, the complete set of the statement and during this period it collects the information from the symbol table and this symbol table is in the memory allocation is in this memory allocation with their particular address location 
So to implement the memory allocation, a data structure called as the location counter is also used. So to implement the memory allocation, to implement this memory allocation, a data structure called as the location counter is also implemented. The locator counter is used and it is uh, initialized to the constant specified in the start statement. We refer the processing involved in the maintaining maintaining the location counter as process. Task performed analysis phase. Tasks performed analysis phase isolate the label mnemonic of code and uh, operand fields of a constant. It isolates the label mnemonic of codes and also the operands of the constants. What are the tasks performed during the analysis phase? The tasks are performed during the analysis phase. It will uh, check the label and the it will check the label of the statement and also after the label it will check for the mnemonic code and its operand operand and what are the values or the constant. If a label is present then enter the pair enter the pair like symbol like symbol and uh, say to that the location counter take the content of that location counter a new entry of the symbol table check for the validity of the now next what it does check for the validity of the mnemonic codes like add serve mul so it will take its value and perform the location counter processing Location counter processing in the sense perform to that location counter. Suppose the location counter is 1, 2, 3, like that. Now, if you go with this example, the first example of the location counter is 1, and the second example of the location, actually, here it is a start at the, uh, the starting of the program, it begins at the 200, and here the location counter is 2. And what is the opcode move? Move is the move is the instruction and its upcode may be 003. It takes that value and it searches in the uh, symbol table what is the operands and what are its content and what is the memory location. So in this way it manipulates and check the validity of the mnemonic code and performs for this the processing of this second location counter processing of this location counter that is all the job of the task of the task of the analysis phase now moving on to the synthesis still the op code is not generated or the object code is not generated or the machine code is not generated still we are in analysis phase after the analysis phase we have the synthesis phase what the synthesis phase does? Consider the a statement like more, and we have no operand here that is BREG, that is the register B, and uh, we have a one operand, operand name or the symbolic name as one, and we must have following the information to synthesize the machine instruction. What the instruction? will be produced corresponding to this statement. So first, address of the symbolic name like one. And next, we need to check the machine operation code. What is the move R? What is the machine operation code of move R? And the first item of the one of the information depends on the source program. And hence, it must be available by the analysis phase. Of course, what is its address and what is uh, its uh, location counter? The location counter for this line of the statement. So it will get the information during the analysis phase from the symbol table. And the second item, it is no R of the information does not depend on the source program. It all depends on the assembly language. Because if it is 8086, if it is 8086, the opcode of this will be assumed that 001. And if it is 
eight zero five. The opcode of this may be zero zero. The opcode of this may be zero zero. So it all depends on the assembly language. Based on the above discussion, consider the use of the data structure during the synthesis phase. The data structure that is the symbol table and uh, symbol table has got the two fields that is name of the symbol and their address and mnemonic table mnemonic table have got the three fields that is the opcode now the data everything is ready only the time is to generate the um, to generate the machine code or the object code so it collects the information from the symbol table and as well as the mnemonic table from the memory allocation from the memory allocation so the mnemonic table has got the three fields that is the th uh, three important fields that is the instruction or the opcode and what is their value the value of the opcode and also the size and also the size this is how the mnemonic value sorry what is the mnemonic and what is the value of that mnemonic code that is the opcode and the memory size Let's say, for example, int has got two data type, char has got two data, uh, char has got one data type, the size. Uh, so the every size of the uh, opcode are also very important to know by the assembler. So that is how the synthesizes phase. The main task, let us remember here, as uh, it was a brief story, so the main task performed by the synthesis phase, obtain the machine code. It is Now here it is a time, uh, in the uh, synth analysis phase, it was just ar arranging them into the uh, respective tables, that is symbol table and opcode table. Now here, from, from uh, whatever it has been arranged in the memory allocation, now, in, during the synthesis phase, it collects them and generates the opcode. It collects them and generates the opcode. Obtain the machine code to look up in the mnemonic table by looking up in the mnemonic table and obtain their address of the operands from the symbol table from the symbol table and synthesize the machine instruction now go for synthesizing the machine instruction now if i show you one example how does it generate it's very important to know that for the generation of the instruction code that is the machine code it's very important at least to see one or two examples depending on the type of the I mean, depending on the type of the machine. Now, the next part, which is the path structure of the assembler. I'll just show you how the path structure of the assembler, where it is the content of the syllabus. We have seen the elements of the assembly language programming. And also, we have seen assembly language scheme. In assembly language scheme, I've shown you the example of the how the assembly language program is and we have seen in that scheme how does it uh, uh, generates the two type of the tables uh, during the analysis and synthesis phase that is the assembly language scheme and today one more we will be seeing the path structure of the assemblers here i am in 2.3 i am the part of the 2.3 if we go with the slides, what we have seen, the content I would like to show once again. The contents, assembly, uh, elements of assembly language in a broad way and a simple assembly scheme. Now, 2.3 is the papa structure of the assemblers. Papa structure of the assemblers. In Elements of assembly language, uh, in elements of assembly language, three elements we have seen. Three elements. That is, that is the mnemonic code, operands, that is symbolic operands, and data. 
declaration and data declaration so once again in sim uh, in simple assembly scheme one program of the assembly language program and also it's how does it does the machine instruction using analysis and synthesis phase right from the analysis and synthesis phase analysis phase does the uh, generation of the two table that is the symbol table and the mnemonic table into the memory allocation and the synthesis phase it looks up into the symbol table and it looks up into the uh, instruction that is the um, opcode instruction or machine code or mnemonic instructions and synthesize on that for the generation of machine instruction for the generation of machine instruction now the third part which is nothing but the pass structure of assembly the third part which is nothing but the pass structure of assembly still i will show you one example of generation of machine instruction or instruction code of okay? any statement i will show you a live example so that is how the analysis phase and synthesis phase now we shall know about the pass structure of assembler the pass structure of assembler this is how they are using one example of the forward reference forward reference is the one where the uh, label or the argument somewhere further it's uh, somewhere further in the program it is located and before that we will not come to know what uh, before that we will not come to know where what is its location what is its location so here in pass structure of assembler single pass translation and problem in forward reference the problem these are the very two highlighted one in the pass structure of Assembler. Uh, as the we have pass structure, as we have a single pass, two pass, multiple pass for the generation of the object. In first pass, what does it happen? In first pass, it only recognizes uh, the symbols. It only recognizes the symbols. And in the second pass, it starts generating the machine code. In the second pass, it starts generating the machine code. And in the first pass, if there are any forward references, so it will determine the problem related to the forward references. Or it just determines, maybe this would be the forward reference and here may be the problem. So it determines the problem in the uh, program wherever the forward references are there. A one pass assembler requires a one pass assembler requires one scan of the source program to generate machine code. To generate what machine code? A one pass assembler requires what? A one pass assembler requires requires one scan now here passes are treated to be as the scan also in first pass what does it happen as the source program is seen by the assembler what it does and in the second pass what does it happen as the source program is seen by the assembler likewise we have one pass two pass or scan one scan two scan in the first scan what does it happen the second scan what does it happen like multiple scans like we have several scans it all depends on the type of the machine there are some machines where it takes only single pass and there are some translators where it takes only double pass that is two pass and there are some translators it will take around multiple passes multiple passes and so on etc so in a single pass translation a one pass translation or a one pass scanner or a single pass scan 
requires one scan of the source program to generate directly the machine code. Requires one scan directly to generate the machine code. In one pass translation, forward reference a problem will occur because it is doing only one pass. So, in one pass, it will not be able to identify all the symbolic tables. Sorry, all the symbolic units or all the symbolic labels or all the symbolic names in one pass. So there would be a problem in one pass where there is a forward reference. When the variables are used before, when the variables or symbolic names are used before their definition, and so that would lead to a problem. At that time, a problem of forward reference occurs. At that time, a problem of forward reference occurs. So if you see this example, John is a label. John is a label. And at this line, the beginning of the program is started at the location called as zero. And using is a using is a word uh, using is a mnemonic word and uh, immediate addressing mode with 15 with the 15 value this type of addressing this type of operands where star is uh, separated by comma so it is a immediate addressing mode is used here and what is happening here means at the at the line one five a five and a so here how many operands one two operands are used one two operands are used and it is continued like one and four one and four and store at the value at a time here Four with the uh, declaration constant. Four with declaration constant. With the value called as literal value called as four, and five with the declaration constant. Declaration constant with the value called as five. Five is a label. Four is also a label. Five is a label. Four is also a label. And temp is also a label. Temp is also a label. Here, how many operands are used? One, two, three, four. Temp is also a label. And declaration storage with a value for a temp is of one f. And this is of n. Now here, at the first scan. Five, five, for 5 and 4 will not come to know what is their declaration types. What is their declaration type? So, first scan, if the scanner is still here at this line, at this line, will not come to know what is there. So, somewhere at the end of the program will come to know. Somewhere at the end of the program will come to know. So, for such symbolic names, it is treated to be as a problem generated here in the first scan so for that reason the solution is a reference problem solution of the forward reference is called as the reference problem tackled using the process called as pack patching so this can be solved using the back patching the open field of an instruction containing the forward reference is left blank initially the table of the instruction containing the forward reference is maintained separately called the table of the incomplete instruction. A table of instruction containing the forward reference. So there is a separate table wherever there is a forward reference in the program. Wherever there is a forward reference in the program. So that, uh, that variables or that symbols are maintained separately in a table that its variables are maintained separately in the table and it is called as the forward reference table and it is called as forward reference so this would be very easy for the lookup during the synthesis phase to generate the uh, to generate the in the code or the machine code or the 
to generate the machine code or the object code. So this is very. Uh, this can be solved using the table separately maintain a table and uh, they can. By and they they are also broadly solved by tackling by going back. That is back patching. So uh, by back patching, we come to know who is the symbol or uh, symbolic name or the variable who who is treated to be as the forward reference and they are picked into the table and this table can be used can be used to fill up the addresses in the incomplete instructions in the incomplete instructions wherever the scan is done wherever the scan is done in the single pass so the address of the forward reference to symbols is put in the blank field is put in the blank field with the help of the back patching again it goes back the scan will not be completed where till the back patching is completed till the back patching is completed the back patching is completed wherever at the first scan wherever at the first scan the blank is found for the forward references and this blank which is found for the forward references it is solved or it is uh, solved by using the table of the by using the table of the instruction table containing the forward reference and by back patching it is, it gets filled that blanks it gets filled that blanks and in this way it synthesizes for that code of Uh, for that code of instruction, for that code of instruction, and it synthesizes and start generating the machine code. General design procedure of a two-pass assembler. So there, there was a problem in a single, in a single pass. What was the problem? If there are any symbolic names, which occur to be a forward reference. So, for that. a critical problem was raised and that was also solved using the back patching because back patching again uh, takes the help of the uh, separate table where the forward reference uh, symbolic names were stored in the in that table and that table was called as the forward reference table forward reference table where it is storing the values or sorry where it is storing the symbolic names of the forward reference with their content and their memory size values now what does it happens in the two pass assemblers what does it happens in the two pass assemblers two pass assembler in the sense scan two two times of scanning for the source code so specify the problem general design procedure of two pass assembler specify the problem specify data structures define the format of the data structure specify the algorithm look for modularity look for modularity capability of one program to be subdivided into independent programming units into independent programming units repeat 1 through 5 on the modules like say for one second i will be repeating specify the problem and specify the data structures specify the problems like forward reference and specify all the data structures like symbol table like symbol and symbol table instruction table and also the forward reference table we need to specify and define the format of those data structure and specify the algorithm and look for modularity modularity in the sense the program where the sub dividing programs are there where the sub uh, sub functions are there the capability of one program to be Uh, subdivided into independent programming units repeat 1 through 5 on the modules so repeat this 1 through 5 on the so these are the general instructions what we need to do in the pass to assemblers what we need to do in the pass to assemblers
So here, little bit uh, the slide has been got changes. <coughs> So let us start. How is the how is the specification of the so how does it happen in the past two? In pass one, here the mismatch of the lines have been taken. Let me uh, clarify them. So in the pass one, In the past one, we need to define all the symbols and the literals. All the symbols and the literals. Literals are those the values. Okay, literals are those the direct values. Like say, so for example, instead of uh, runtime, you are giving there in the program itself. Like runtime during the runtime, then uh, so for example, enter the value of a. So during runtime, the value of a you may be entering something like five or ten, something whatever maybe. But this uh, during the uh, to avoid during the runtime, if you want to add in the program, you can add it. And those how they will take using the uh, using the literal. I mean using the literal uh, label. So symbol names in the past one we need to define the symbol names and the literals. And also, they determine the length of the machine instruction. Like as I was saying, as it is a eight bit, eight bit, sixteen bit. What is the machine length? Eight bit, sixteen bit, thirty two bit, or sixty four bit. Keep track of the location counter and remember the values of the symbols. This is a usual story, as usual, common story. How to generate an instruction? How to generate a machine instruction of a uh, instruction of a statement? So first, what it will do? It will just de de define all the symbols, whatever is present in the program, and next it will determine uh, it will determine the literals, and also it will determine what is the length of the host machine, and also it will keep track of the location counter so that the instruction. So that it will point to the next instruction, and also it will remember the values of the symbols. What are the values of the symbols? So, for example, add a comma b. If I'm using the symbols like a and b, and what is the value of a? Maybe I'm using the literal, uh, literal uh, look label, and using the literal label, maybe I'm using the value for a and value for b. So we need to, uh, so if we need to specify all those in the Pass one, right? Pass one algorithm during and process uh, some pseudo options and uh, like say for example EQ and uh, declaration uh, de uh, like declaration st uh, storage. So we need to keep tra uh, trace of all those forward references also and remember the literals. What is been and list of literals in the program. And in the past, uh, past two. Pass to algorithm. What does it happen? It starts generating the object code. That is the machine instruction. It starts generating generating the code code of the instruction or machine instruction. What is the machine? So it starts generating the machine instruction again based on the type of the language what it is used, uh, like assemblers or TASM, and based on the machine. What it is, uh, where where that language is used in what type of machine, like uh, eight bit machine or sixteen bit machine or thirty two bit machine, and generate based on that the instruction and the data, and process those uh, pseudo uh, process those options of the program. Means it synthesizes. So first it will look up. 
the values of the symbol table then it will look into the instructions and generate the data for the declaration storage and declaration constants and literals it generates from the memory allocations and it processes the uh, statements still i have come up with the uh, for the past one how is the data structure input the source program data structure how we really need to write the algorithm okay that was the brief story what i have told in the previous two slide previous two slide this is the brief story and here how uh, we will write the program sorry algorithm to have the pass one algorithm so input the source program location counter used to uh, used to keep track of each instruction instructions and machine operation table machine operation table contain the mnemonic codes of codes class and their mnemonic in informations and their length like this mnemonic information and their like this mnemonic table it will have the mnemonic uh, mnemonic uh, column what is the mnemonic column what is the type of the mnemonic instruction and mnemonic code their mnemonic code add is having one and sub is having two and their length and their length so this is how it uses the data structure for having the machine uh, machine table it will have all that table of three fields and pseudo operation table in pseudo operation table uh, contain a field of machine op code contain a field of machine op code pseudo operation table first it will keep track of location counter then it will keep track of uh, machine operation table then it will keep track of pseudo operation table the pseudo operation table is same as uh, what the code is Uh, what is the code is uh, i mean up to the intermediate code up to the intermediate code so it contain the field of mnemonic code only the code of uh, mnemonic it will have the only one column of mnemonic only the mnemonic codes not the name of the mnemonic only the code of the mnemonic and also the and also the Uh, class and mnemonic information class and mnemonic informations like say for example uh, maybe inter uh, immediate immediate routine number <coughs> now next it will be having next database it should have the symbol table this is very usual common commonly we think uh, pass one means it will have the symbol table mnemonic table but apart from mnemonic table we have uh, mnemonic table means itself is called as the mnemonic operation table usually uh, every broad pass uh, passes will have the mnemonic table operation table that is the mnemonic table itself is called as operation table then symbol table and here the extra part what we are having is that is the pseudo operation table contains the field of the only the mnemonic uh, code and the class of the mnemonic information software so the symbol table is also added and it will keep track of the symbol table to store each label and its value and also the literal table literal table not individual literal table uh, individual not individual table, whatever the literals are generated in that pool so all will be stored in the literal table to each literal variables and its location and literal full that pool of the literal table will be there and copy of the input to used uh, to used later by the pass two so in the uh, pass one what are the databases it will have it will have the databases of symbol table mem operational table and the literal table sim and uh, as i was saying symbol table operational table pseudo table and literal table and full that pool of the pseudo uh, sorry literal table very broad way we should have 
in the past one we should have the databases of symbol table instruction table means the operation mnemonic machine operation table in symbol table instruction table then pseudo table then literal table and pool of the literal table and also a copy of the input where it can be used later by the past two so the machine uh, machine opcode table and pseudo opcode table which generates the opcode here these both the pseudo operation table and the machine operation table as the machine operation table is having the uh, code of that uh, instruction or the opcode of that instruction or the mnemonic and its length and here in opcode sorry in pseudo operation table contains the mnemonic code class and also the mnemonic information and also the mnemonic information mnemonic code its class and mnemonic information so these both are helpful in generating the operation table now where we have come we have come in the generation of the operation table this is very important part to be known where we are now for the generation of the operation table so the machine operation table sorry not machine yes machine of op, opcode machine operation table machine operation table and pseudo operation table pseudo operation table contains the code of opcode and pseudo, uh, code of opcode and also the class and information of class of opcode and information of opcode machine pseudo operation means it contains the it can uh, it contains uh, it contains the opcode their value and also the and also the length so these both are added and they are used for generation of the op table operation table now it is generation for operation table or the op code now operation table contains the field of the mnemonics of operation code class and mnemonic information and the class field indicates whether the op code the class field indicates whether the op code belongs to an imperative statement or it belongs to the declarative statement or it belongs to an assembler or it belongs to an assembler the class indicates the class of an the class of an of code the class of an of code it indicates that particular instruction for which it belongs whether it belongs to imperative statement imperative statements are very usual statements like having the label of uh, label of code operate operant label of code operant label label mnemonic word that is nothing but the op code and operands and operands declaration or the declarative statements are those statements where declaration storage or declaration constant are used and assembler directives like start whether that type of the statement is belonging to the start end or eq or something like origin or uh, or log origin or it means literal origin lt origin so such type of statements we need to identify means the system does the assembler does which type of that particular statement which class it belongs to that uh, particular type of the statement which class or particular type of the code of code which class it belongs to whether imperative declarative or whether it is a additive declarative or assembler directive if an 
if an if it contains the mnemonic informations the pair of the means the mnemonic contains a uh, machine code and instruction length else it contains the id of the routine id of the routine to handle the declaration statement or the assembler directive statements so this is all about the generation of the operation table how does it look operation table how does it look whether now this is also first uh, same example now the first column is called as the location counter and the second column is called as the label and the third column is called as the instruction or the operation code or op code and operands and these are the memory locations so how the mnemonic uh, mnemonic operation table look like the mnemonic operation table it looks like something like this yes i hope you all are seeing it yes so in this we can identify which class of the statement they are which class of the statement they are like so for example if i have the mnemonic informations like this with routine hash with routine hash and in bracket 4 comma 5 and uh, that is called as the <coughs> which class so the class indicates here we had seen the three classes that is assembler directive and imperative statement and declarative statement so here as i told start end are the assembler directive so it goes to the routine one it goes to the routine one the mnemonic information what it what the system what the operation table understands here what we can understand as the system is understanding here uh, as it sees the start start is nothing but a directive statement assembler directive statement assembler directive statement so it is a routine one and as it sees the move something like move r and uh, it is a imperative statement why because it is a usual statement of the assembly language and move on is also a usual statement of the assembly language so it is moving or uh, means it is having the mnemonic information what it is understanding that it is assume that it is at the location counter 4 and location counter 5 and they are in the belonging to the uh, pairing with the one routine the pairing with still with the one routine and add add is also nothing but a the imperative <laughs> statement imperative statement and and here something very different dl declarative ds as declaration storage which is called as for such declaration storage and for literals the routine is called routine is called here where the routine for the start is the start beginning and the routine for the end is the second routine is the second routine and what would be the third routine the third routine is the origin where it is a assembler directive origin is also a assembler directive ltorg is also assembler directive and uh, ds is a uh, ds is a declarative and eq is a assembler directive and is a assembler directive what are the assembler directives assembler directives which directs the assembler to perform the actions which directs the assembler like start and eq are the assembler directives start and eq and origin these are the assembler directives where the action should be started what the action should be done so that is called as the assembler directives for all the assembly, if you observe the mnemonic informations or the mnemonic information what the assembler will do 
or what the assembler is understanding whenever it sees the start or any assembler directives it is the routines the routine of the start well it is waiting for the its completion that is the routine to and in in the program what it is have, ha happening what the routine or what the function where the function sub divides where it is starting after the start of the program so that that indicates the routine three in the program internally in the program and where if you observe here the routine four the routine four is nothing but where the declaration how the program is matching one after the other according to the logic so the routine four is nothing but the assembler directive indicated here and the routine five as per that program as per this program as per this program how the mnemonic informations are flowing how the mnemonic informations are flowing of course here is the routine one which is begin is the routine one which is begin uh, sorry uh, which is begin the subdivision of the program uh, there is add and sub add and sub are begin here so internally this would be the first logic and this would be the second logic and no r these are the shiftings of the register something the label which is moved to the register a so based on that program the mnemonic informations are created these are the mnemonic informations which are created <coughs> how is the machine code table how is the machine code table the machine code table it segregates all the imperative statements it segregates all the imperative statements and calculate their evaluate their mnemonic informations and evaluate their mnemonic information so the machine uh, machine operation table contain a field of class that is the mnemonic information and its class mnemonic information and its class with the length mnemonic code <coughs> code of the imperative statement and its length code of the imperative statement and its length now say for example no r no r is used in the program no r is used in the program no r no m no r no m add bc uh, ltorg is a directive assembler directive now start is assembler directive no r is a more is called as a uh, imperative statement more is imperative statement om is imperative statements and add is a imperative statement and bc is also an imperative statement and uh, ltorg is a literal origin and it is called as the assembler directive it is assembler directive sub sub is a imperative statement this is also imperative statement stop is a assembler directive stop is a assembler directive wherever the labels are there those labels are considered to be as a <coughs> of course the labels are used with the imperative statement or it can be used with the assembler directives also now ds is a declaration ds is a declaration assembler declaration or a declarative statement ds is a declaration statement declaration storage well it is a statement of declaration so it divides the class into a common identity it divides the class into common identity first it was dividing into mnemonic operation table in the mnemonic operation table whatever the instructions are used whatever the mnemonic codes are there those mnemonic codes it puts them into uh, based on their class and then it takes the mnemonic informations mnemonic information keeps the pair of the 
the keeps uh, it will it will keep the pair of the mnemonic code mnemonic code as well as their length mnemonic code of r is 4 mnemonic code of r is 4 mnemonic code of mu m is 5 and mnemonic code of add is 2 and if you observe mnemonic code of sub is 2 and their length is 1 to observe in this all are having the length as one because these are very simple <coughs> statements used in the program a programmer has used here like how int is taking two data type int is taking two data type float is taking four data type char will take one data type so like this the size so here whatever the size we are taking or uh, sorry whatever the Now instructions we have used in the program in this program whatever the instructions are being used those instructions are of the length called as one only but you need to know but you need to know what is their opcode value <coughs> mu r is having the opcode value as 4 mu m is having the opcode value as 5 now let me begin here very simple example add is used in the program it is having the opcode value as 1 see here sub it is having the opcode value as 2 opcode value as 2 and uh, here one more example 3 uh, it is having the opcode value for multiplication for multiplication maybe for division some other but directly he has used for mu r as 4 and mu m as 5 Move M as five. Maybe for a division it will be six. Maybe for a division it will be six. And furthermore, for mod all such things, maybe it is. It all depends on the type of the assembly language which we are using the versions, and also depends on the host. But only the generation of object code it depends on the host machine. Only the generation of the object code it depends on the host machine. And in the next step, what we have done. The opcode, sorry, the machine opcode table. It takes only the class of similarity, only the imperative statement, and only the uh, statement of uh, the common statement of uh, the assembler directive, and next only the common statement of the. Now, so for symbols also, what the length it is having? See, this is how it. divides complete structure i have shown you and lastly literals literals at the location is 211 literals at one is located at 212 and one is located at 219 if you observe the these what are those locations locations of see here uh, location of this 5 5 is at 211 And the location of this one is at two hundred and twelve, and another one is used. Another one is used with that two hundred and nineteen, two hundred and nineteen. So these are the locations. So how many uh, class of uh, mnemonic instructions we have studied? The class of mnemonic instructions we have come to know about <coughs> imperative statement, assembler directive statement. And also we have uh, come to know about uh, imperative, so uh, imperative as well as directive, and one more is declaration. So among these statements, we need to identify as imperative statement, declaration statement, then assembler directive. So only one statement is found to be as a one statement is found to be as a that is. declaration statement or declaration language here declaration statement ds should be there but it is written as dl so what are the type of the symbols used in the program see here the symbols are loop next last a back b it means a b back last next loop a b back Loop next last a back b. So and what is their addresses? Their addresses, if you see in the program already, it is located. Loop is at the address two zero two. Next is at the address two uh, fourteen. Last is at the address 
216. A is at the address 217. Back is at the address. It is taking on the loop. So B is at the address 219. So let us identify here what is the back. Back address is having 20. 202 is having the back address why because this is going looping this is going looping so back is located this is becoming as the forward reference but first only it has been identified here who is that means back loop 202 so loop was identified here only therefore 202 is allocated for back therefore 202 is allocated so back is treated to be as a forward reference already loop was here and with the help of the loop the back is treated with the help of the loop the back is treated back label is treated therefore for back also 202 address location it is taken 202 the address location it is taken for back it is 202 and for loop also it is 20 so this is how i have told you about uh, what are the symbol table literal table how is the operation code and uh, the pseudo table uh, the pseudo table is the one where it is for only the routines for only the routines and furthermore in the next class also we will go with the generation of the data structure of the pass one databases i will be continuing of all the tables how many tables we have come to know Uh, machine uh, machine operation table pseudo operation table symbol table literal table and literal pool table these are the five tables which we need to know which we need to understand then only we can understand the assemblers 1 2 3 4 five tables okay in the next class also once again i will begin these five tables so let me take your attendance So, one start. Start your attendance. One. Next. Two is absent. Three. Ma'am, no number present, ma'am. Next is just say on on your own. Start your attendances. See if you don't answer, I will mark it absent. One. Next. Two. Hmm. Three. Hmm. Four is absent. Next five. Five. Why are you not? Six. Huh. Seven. Seven is absent. Eight. Seven. Seven. Ah. Huh. Next. Eight. Next nine is absent. Ten. Present ma'am. Ten. Why are you Eight. keeping quiet? Huh. Eleven. Eleven. Hmm. Huh. Next. Twelve is absent. Thirteen. Thirteen. Fourteen. 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 Fifteen. Huh. Sixteen. Huh. Seventeen absent. Eighteen. Nineteen. Nineteen present. Eighteen. Hello, ma'am. Eighteen. Twenty. Ah, twenty-one. Continue. Please hurry up. Twenty-two. Continue, ma'am. Ah. Twenty-one, ma'am. Present. Hmm. Next. Mm -hmm. Twenty-one. 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 Tw
ओके assignment question and next questions from 11 to last you should consider it as a homework assignment okay thank you all ma'am repeat uh, 